Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, let's go today uh, to the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians chapter 5. And with the Lord's help, amen, over the next few minutes, we're going to close out this series we've been on for several weeks now on the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. Glory to God. What a, what a, I just, I was thinking last night, I stayed up late and was just, was sitting in the living room and the girls had gone to bed and, you know, as you'll say, Sam goes, put the women and children to bed, praise God. So they're all in the bed and I'm, I'm just up. You know, it gets quiet after midnight. Just like, you know, over in the morning, things get quiet and, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of activity going on. That's why you, you talk about the third, like the third watch of the night. You, yeah, 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning, usually it's, it's, it's very quiet. And you can tell a difference if you're up at that time. If you get up, it's different. Well, it's biblical. But, but anyway, just, just meditating and, and just thinking on the things that we've looked at. And, and listen, we have, we, have, we have not come anywhere close to covering all of this or speaking things that we could say or or things we can minister. But we have trusted the Lord to help us say what it needs to be said. And I encourage you to go back at, 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 uh, go back and look at the broadcast. Pull some of these things back up at times as the Holy Spirit quickens you. I know the Holy Spirit does that with me in my life. A lot of times he'll bring something to my remembrance. See, that's one of his functions. Jesus said he'll bring all things to your remembrance. All means there's different kinds of things he can bring to your remembrance. And there's times the Lord will quicken something to me. Sometimes he'll, he'll bring a book to my remembrance. And even if I don't read the whole book, if he quickens that to me and I go and get in that book, I'll go through, and there's things I mean, and it is so timely in things he ministers to me. Amen. It's no different with services, you know. The Holy Ghost can bring things to your remembrance, and he can, uh, he can give you something when you need it at the moment. Because uh, he's eternal. Amen. And so is the word. Hallelujah. It's, not, it, it's yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Because Jesus is the word. Remember, he's the living word. So we been, begin to look at some things. And just for a moment, we talked about, as we close this out, first of all, Jesus, when he was in the upper room with his disciples, he said, I'm going to pray. And, and the Father's going to give you another comforter. And he's going to abide with you forever. And not only will he be with you, he will be in you. How long? Forever. You remember Jesus said it, and then the scripture says in other places, God has said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. And he said, what? Know you not? Don't you know and understand that the Spirit of God dwells in you? I'm talking about the Spirit of God. Amen. We're talking about the same glory and the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. God said in, in, in Corinthians also to, to the church there, he said, listen, I'll walk in you. I mean, I, not only will I be your God, I will walk in you. I will live in you. I will walk in you. I'll be your God. You, you'll be my people. And I'm telling you guys, like I said earlier, I, I am so thankful. Oh, I, I've tasted and seen of the sweetness of love. He's the spirit of love and the spirit of power and the spirit of a sound mind. There was a time in my life I was struggling in my mind. I was struggling in my head. As a child, I'd give my life to Jesus even as a, as a young boy, but my life was so out there and I was under such oppression. You know, I was, I was d just demonically oppressed. Now, I wasn't demon-possessed. I didn't have a demon spirit in my spirit because my spirit is sealed. But people can be oppressed in their, in their body and in their soul. Let, let me give you an example. Um, I remember the house we live in when we first got in that house, one a year or two, uh, you know, we discovered termites in, 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 in our house. Now, they weren't all through our house. They were just in one portion. But, you know, we got rid of those termites. But see, there was termites in that house. But I, I lived in that house, but there weren't termites in me. There weren't termites in me. 
See, you can be a believer. You, you, you don't have, you, 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 don't, you, may, not, you may, may not be oppressed in your spirit, man, but you can be oppressed in your body. Amen. And even in your mind. And that's where I was. Oh, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the power of God. His brother Charles Macklin used to say, Holy Ghost, he's the muscle of God. That's what he called. He said, he's the muscle of God. He's God's muscle. I like that. God's muscle. God got big bicep, huge tricep. Holy Ghost is huge. He's a person. He lives in us. Jesus told that woman at the well, he said, listen, if you knew who it was who's standing here talking to you, you'd ask me for something, and I'll give you something you'll never thirst again. See, that's, see, that's the answer, folks. The Holy Ghost is the answer. Why do you think there's so much out there, so much confusion, so much stuff that's been discussed back and forth and debated about the Holy Ghost? Even to the place that a lot of churches, even today, don't really want certain uh, manifestations and some of the things that he brings to the table, even in our churches. And even a lot of churches today don't believe in the things that the early church was established in. We, we, we've looked at this. We went through the book of Acts. Everywhere you see in the early church, even 20 years later when Paul came to, to Ephesus, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Everywhere we see in the early church, they were filled and they spoke in tongues. Not just on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. I'm talking about years after years after years. You see it in chapter 4. You see it in chapter 8. You see it in chapter 9. You see it in chapter 10. You see it in chapter 19. And yet, it's, it's the very thing that took place in the early church, and now people are confused about it, and a lot of people don't even want to have anything to do with it. Oh, that's another story. We'll get into some other things. Glory to God. Oh, praise the Lord. But we looked at some things. We went through the book of Acts. We talked about the side of, of the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. You know, Jesus talking to the woman. He said, if you ask me, I'll give you something you won't thirst. He said, it'll be a well in you. It'll be a well in you. And then he talked about in chapter 7 when he stood up that, that great day of the feast. And he talked about the, the rivers of living water that would flow out of us. And this, he talked about the Spirit. So we talked about the well. We talked about the rivers. We talked about how that the Spirit of God will lead us first and foremost in the area of love. Because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Any fruit bearing in our life by the Spirit of God will be love, joy, peace. But let me say this. God is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, all that comes from love. That's right. That's right. And we looked at all that. We also talked about how that, that the Holy Ghost is a major, major part of your, your calling in life. What God has called you to, the work that He's called you to. We looked at Acts 13, how that there were certain prophets and teachers, certain prophets and teachers in the church. And it started with Barnabas and ended with Saul at that time. Notice they were prophets and teachers. But yet, as they ministered to the Lord, they were gathered together and they were praying about some things. And the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, to the work that I've called them to. You go to the very next chapter, they're no longer called prophets and teachers. They're called apostles. The Holy Ghost can shift you into another phase of your life. It's part of His ministry. Uh, Paul told a young pastor named Timothy, he said, these things will be kept in you, the callings and things that have been prophesied and spoken into you and hands laid on you, they'll be kept by the Holy Ghost. So that tells me that the communion and the fellowship with the Spirit of God in our lives as we go forward so that we can completely fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for us. So that we can prove not only what is good and acceptable, 
but the perfect will of God in our lives. It's going to be in relation to how we yield to and how we know in fellowship with the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Can I get an amen out of that? Praise the Lord. So we talked about that. So let's move on to Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. And we're going to close this out and go here today. Notice here, uh, verse 15, he says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Do you believe that God can redeem time in your life? Well, the Bible says he, he can right here. Hallelujah. That's why I don't care where you are in life. And you may be watching online. I, but see, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are. I don't care how old you are. God can do in your life in a week. See, a lot of people don't, don't understand the ability of God. God can prepare your life all the way up to a certain point. You know, and then in, in a few days or in a few months, have you accomplished His purpose and plan for your life to the utmost. And even though you look back at your years and you think, well, I've wasted years. When's God going to show up? When's this going to happen? I feel like I haven't done what I should have done or could have done. You remember Paul talked about, he said, I keep my body under. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he said, I bring it into subjection. So that. Uh, unless I preach to others, I'd be a castaway. In other words, he said, I, I want to fulfill that which God is, is, is calling me to. I want to operate in, in the spirit of mastery and everything that God has caused me to run. And then he, he began to use uh, a parallel. He began to talk about like fighters, people who would buffet their body. He said, I'm not one like fights in the air. I buffet my body. I keep it under so that I can, can fulfill that which God has prepared for me. You know, uh, people in the Olympics... You know, people can train all their life. And they may just operate in one Olympics. But they can train from a teenager, years, get all the way up. For one javelin throw. For one hundred yard meter race. And yet, they, you know, I'm talking about the, they, they, a 100-meter race, I guess, instead of 100 yards, but 100-meter. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking football here. But they, they, they prepare. My point is they, they, they prepare all their life for that moment, for a few seconds. Paul said they do it for a corruptible prize. He said we do it for an incorruptible See, a lot of times, see, we look at the outward. We look at the natural. But see, God looks at the heart. God looks at the spirit side of these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that encourages me. That encourages me. Because where we are in life, <laughs> let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost, I, I, I refer to him, he... he he is a supernatural GPS device. You may get off, you may bend off, but if you'll yield to him and come to know him, because he's here to bring everything of the Father and Jesus to your life, even the plans and purposes that he has for you. And I don't care if you got off course, he'll get you right back on, and you'll arrive at the destination that he has for you. Oh, glory to God. Because, see, the devil's a liar. And he'll tell you, he'll, he'll, see, he always tries to make you unfit. He always tries to bring condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Paul, uh, John wrote about it and said, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. But if a heart doesn't condemn us, then have we confidence toward God. And we can receive the things that God has for us. But know, know this, even when John wrote, it's not God who's condemning anybody. You remember Paul, Paul wrote over in Romans chapter 8. He said, what do we say to these things? What do we say to these things in life? 
If God be for us, who can be against us? He said, who's going to bring a charge against God's elect once he's chosen? It's God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? Who's going to condemn a a child of God? Well, we know who who the condemner and the accuser is. And sometimes people will condemn themselves. But know this, it's not the Spirit of God. Because condemnation is simply a spirit or a lie or a thought that's trying to make you unfit and unworthy. Undeserving. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, let me, let me move on here. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice here he said in verse 17, he said, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We see the will of God referred to right here. So what is the will of God? Not to be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with with the Spirit. Now let me just let me just let me say this to you. The issue here is to is 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 is, is drunkenness. Because if you're drunk with wine, because I've I've been around people who's been drunk before. I even knew a guy once, whether in the bot. No, I'm just telling. <laughs> Here's the thing about drunk drunkenness. Most of the time, when people get drunk, um, they lose control. But really, because you lose control, if you lose control, then who's in control? If you lose control, because people who get drunk will do things and say things that they would never ever do otherwise because they lose control. Well, once again, I want to say this again. If you lose control, then who's in control? There's a greater, my point is there's a greater issue here than just taking a sip or drinking a glass of wine. If, if you yield to things, and we're, here's where we're going with this. We're talking about the Spirit of God because there's other spirits. It, 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 it's who's in control, and and what are you yielding to? See, the Lord loves us. Let me tell you something. Uh, this life is hard to do sober. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm, listen, listen. I, I'm, I know we, we sort of laugh about it, but I'm telling you right now, this life out here, it, it's hard to do sober. you either going to have to be drunk or filled with the Spirit. Or, 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 or That's why people go and they'll walk into a bar and go, uh, listen, I need a drink. <laughs> uh, and then sometimes they'll look at the guy and say, uh, make it a double. <laughs> make it a double. Because listen to me, he's talking about life here. So there's only two here. People are either going to revert to getting drunk or filled with, 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 with alcohol, or the option is, is to get filled with, and, and drunk on the Spirit. And as a believer, and you get in situations of life, and, and you feel like you need a drink, then go ahead and take you a drink. Go ahead, go ahead and get you a drink. Go ahead, go ahead and, and, and be filled with the Spirit. Go ahead and begin to speak some things. Go ahead and speak in tongues. Go ahead and receive the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and, and, and speak some things. Taste of the Lord and His goodness. But I'm telling you, things out there, yeah. I know why people, that's why, listen, guys, that's why we got so many people who are under the influence of alcohol. 
That's why they're putting so much stuff in their body. Because they're not turning to the other option of being filled with the Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Listen, and let me say this. We, we use the word Spirit-filled, the term Spirit-filled real loosely. You know, that person's Spirit-filled. You know, he, he, he was Spirit-filled. Listen, well, he may have been Spirit-filled at one time, or she may be in Spirit-filled at one time. She may have received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues at one time. But right now in her life, uh, she may not be too Spirit-filled. See, there's many fillings. There's many renewals. You know, we looked at back, at back at this earlier. See, the outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed. How, how often? Day by day. They were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, and then they were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 4. Within two years, they, I mean, listen, there was another experience of God's Spirit in their lives to empower them and to help them where they were. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things, a lot of things. Praise God. The Bible tells us we need to be being filled. We need the influence of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit in our life. We need that influence. Praise the Lord. Like I said earlier, the beginning of the church, we see this in Acts chapter 2. Mark 16, the mandate from the Lord Jesus Christ himself was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. To go in all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. This, we call it the Great Commission, but listen, it's a mandate from him. This is not just to preachers and apostles. Anyone who believes the gospel, any, anyone who believes on Jesus shall be saved. And these shines shall follow them that believe. It didn't talk about the fivefold ministry. It talked about believers. It said they will cast out devils. In other words, they will take authority over evil spirits and demonic spirits. Next thing. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. You know, he thought it was important. This was the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm going to have to move on. I could get off on that. Hallelujah. I, I remember Brother Hagin saying this years ago. And... I, I don't know if it's verbatim, but it's close to it. But he said this. He said, the more I speak, the more I pray and worship in tongues, the more manifestations of the Spirit I have in my life. I'm talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm talking about the manifestations, the gifts of the Spirit. He said, the less I speak, the less I pray and worship in tongues, the less manifestations of the Spirit I have in my life. That's a powerful statement. I, you know, I have to agree with that. Hallelujah. I have to agree with that. Acts 1.8, we looked at this. Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You remember when Jesus sent them to Jerusalem? He didn't say, he didn't say go to Jerusalem so that you can be born again. You remember he breathed on them. We looked at this in John chapter 20. He breathed on them uh, in the upper room there and said, receive the Holy Ghost. But he told them to go to Jerusalem right after that in that same setting and be endued with power upon, from upon, uh, upon them. They would receive power that would come upon them from high on high. The promise of the Father. He didn't say go to Jerusalem, go there until you have the new birth experience or uh, until you're converted. He said, you go there until you receive this power. And he said, you shall receive power to be a witness. Now, let, let, let me say something to you. Sometimes we just look at, at, at witnessing. You know, I grew up in a certain denomination, and witnessing was like, we're going to go, we're going to pick a night of the week, and we're going to go knock on doors, and we're going to go witness to people. And you can be a part of this witnessing. Outreach, or whatever we wanted to call it. And, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not belittling that. But sometimes we've just looked at witnessing. Maybe we're going to give our testimony to somebody, share a scripture, or we're going to go witness to them. No, listen to me. 
Jesus said, you shall receive a, a power from on high and you shall be a witness. You shall be a witness. There's something about you. There's a power in your life. There's a presence in your life that's different. It's not, and, and you don't even have to say a word to anybody at times. I'll give you an example of this. Right after I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I mean, I received the Holy Spirit. Uh, I went down in a, in, a, in a service on a Sunday evening uh, to receive. I prayed. I just didn't understand. See, I didn't know a lot about it. You know, I was just ignorant. I was just ignorant. And, you know, and of course you hear all kinds of different things and stuff. And, you know, I had that in my mind. And there were some roadblocks. But I knew in me that I needed this. And I, and I desired it greatly. So the desire in me uh, drove me. The, the, the Bible tells us that, that through desire, this is in the book of Proverbs, through desire a man will intermeddle with wisdom. I mean, listen, I, I mean, it's, how bad do you want it? I mean, I want it so bad, I, listen, I, I couldn't stand it. And, and I was just going to, I was not going to do without it. And yet I was disappointed when I went in to receive. But I didn't give up. I didn't quit. I didn't say, well, it's not for me. No, because there was something on the inside of me. See, the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He'll guide us in all truth. The Word is truth. Jesus said anybody who is a believer can speak in new tongues. Hallelujah. So I received. I received in my house. I mean, I, I, I received that night. I just didn't know how to yield and, 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 and speak. But I went home, and, and thank God I did. And, I mean, it was just right after that. I mean, listen, I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to give me utterance. I mean, I, I get up praying in tongues. I pray in tongues all day long. I, I, I go to bed. I, I wake up praying in tongues, go to bed praying in tongues, ride in the road in the car praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues all the time. Because it was new. I mean, it's new. I mean, hallelujah. Praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. Well, I wanted to go to Birmingham because we didn't have a Christian bookstore here at this time, and I wanted to go get some Brother Hagen books. So I went over to, to Birmingham, and this is over there by, uh, used to be Eastwood Mall and Century Plaza. Used to be over there. And up on top of the hill, there was a, a Lighthouse Christian bookstore, and there was a Red Lobster right by it. So uh, this was years ago. So I went over there, went into the Christian bookstore, praying in tongues, praying in tongues all the way. Amen, Brother Hagin said, the more I pray and worship in, in tongues, the more manifestations that, that I see and experience. You remember, Jesus said, you shall be a witness. It, it, you, it's something you'll be. Not something you just got to try to do. This is your being. Well, I get through getting the Brother Hagin books, man, I'm excited. Go over there and get me some books, and I'm thinking, man, I'm... My belly's rubbing my backbone, and you don't have to twist my arm to get some good food. Uh, and so, you know, any kind of food, really, that's decent. I mean, fried bologna sounds pretty good right now. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I go into the Red Lobster over there, and uh, I go in. Of course, I, I get seated. I'm by myself, sitting in a booth, and the uh, waitress comes in and takes my orders for something to drink. She said, what would you like to drink, sir? And I told her what I wanted to drink. She said, okay, I'll be back in just a minute. So she went to get my drink, so I'd have time to look at my menu. And uh, I'm sitting there and waiting for a few minutes and waiting for a few minutes and drinking. And all of a sudden, I sort of look up, and she's peeking around the corner, like where she walks back into the kitchen. I mean, she's looking around the corner at me. And then she, when she saw me look at her, then she went back and she, you know. And in a few minutes, I'm sort of sitting there, you know. And all of a sudden, I look, and there she is. She's, she's, she's peeking around the corner and looking at me again. And then when she sees me, she darts back in behind the wall. And in just a minute, she comes walking out, and she walks up to the, the table. I'm just sitting there. I mean, I'm like, what in the world? What in the world? And she looked at me, and she's got these tears in her eyes. She said, you're a Christian, aren't you? And I said, yes, why do you ask? She said, because... When I walked away from you and walked over here, when you come and sit down, she said, this whole booth is lit up. There's like this, this light all around you in this booth. 
And she said, it's just, it's, it's, it's shining all around you. I can see it. It was a visible light, like a glory. Now, I didn't, I didn't feel that. I didn't see it. But she saw it. And I tell you, it, it flipped her out. That's why she kept darting in behind the wall and looking. And she started, she started crying. And so I ministered to her. And I gave her one of them, uh, Brother Hagin's books and left a real good tip in it. And stuck, uh, 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 just blessed her. And gave her one of my Brother Hagin books. You know what that was a result from? The Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. And he's not a respecter of persons. I'm telling you right now, you've got something on the inside of you. Something not just in you, to live in you for your benefit, that is upon you. What she saw was something upon me. It was him. I don't say that to brag on me. I'm telling you, this is for all of us. This is what Jesus was talking about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me, sh- let me share a few things with you here. You ready? This, these are good nuggets. You ready? Spiritual influences in the earth are manifested to, to the degree that they are yielded to. Spiritual influences in this earth are manifested to the degree that they are yielded to. And that's either good or bad. Evil, demonic spirits are the Holy Ghost. The more we learn to yield and to follow Him, the more He'll manifest and do things in and through us. Rivers of living water flowing out of us. The power and the anointing of God that rests upon us. His anointing. It's the same anointing. Oh, listen to me. Jesus had it in his garment, and a woman would press through the crowd and touch it. Paul got such revelation of it, he'd say, I tell you what, even, uh, could it be a greater work? Yes. L- let me take, let me take, instead of them coming and touching my garment like they touch you, let me take a garment from me. Yes. And I'll send the garment to somebody in another place that's sick and diseased. And even if there's a de- demon spirit controlling this thing, it'll leave them. Because of the anointing that's upon me, in me and upon me, I can, I can send a handkerchief or an apron even from my body to another place. Oh, uh, to the point that even if my shadow comes in contact with somebody, they can be healed. We have to be mindful. We sing the song. Let us become more aware of your presence. Yeah. I said this last week. It's not a put down. I just I say it to all of us. I think sometimes we sing songs, but we really are not conscious and aware of what we're singing. And yet, in the early church, uh, there was a man once. I, I he was from Texas. He was a theologian, and he he I saw him on t- television. It was on TBN or Daystar or somewhere. I forget where it was, but this is years ago. And he talked about in the early church. He said a lot of times our worship now we 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 lead off with worship, and then we get into the word. He said back then they would get in. Of course, they'd have celebration and music playing when people would come into their homes and stuff, and they would greet folks and love one another, and sometimes they'd break bread or whatever, and then they would get into the ministry of the word. And he said, that their order was, is after the word would go forth. Then they would praise and worship God for his word. My point being, listen, let us become. See, we sing, let us become, uh, be aware of more of his presence. I say, uh, once we uh, get, get the revelation on it and the word of God, it's easy to sing it. But these things are available. They're in the scriptures. Aprons coming off of people's body. Listen, these guys were called. They had, they had a calling on their life. But as a believer, they're mo- no more special than you are. You have the same spirit and the same anointing they do. Now, they may be anointed to, 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 for a certain purpose to fulfill the office or uh, do a work. But it just in our lives, as far as being a witness, 
Jesus said to all of us, you shall receive power. Dunamis, dynamite, explosive. See, we, 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 we must believe this. We must mix faith with the Word. Not just mixing faith with the Word, but yielding to the Holy Ghost in us, like I said earlier. Speaking, allowing Him to give us utterance. Praise God. Whichever spirit you yield to, you'll take on the characteristics of that spirit. You know, people, for example, you see people who, who, who are just, I mean, I'm talking about liars. They yield to that spirit, but to begin with. And then they take on the characteristics of that spirit. Unclean spirits come to people. The more they yield to that spirit, they take on the characteristics of that spirit. I'm talking about sexual uncleanness, all kinds of unclean. I mean, it's, they yield to murder. You take on the characteristics. Well, what about the Holy Ghost? How, how, much, how much more can we yield to Him and take on the characteristics of the Spirit of God? Amen. God Himself in us. Mm, mm, mm. Praise the Lord. Why is speaking... I'm going to go back to the tongues thing for a minute because we talked about it a little bit last week. Why is speaking in tongues uh, important? Why is the speaking in tongues is the thing that you see that we made reference to in Acts chapter 2? Uh, you know, 8, 9, or 8 and 10 and, and, and 19. Well, we looked at many reasons. Last week we talked about how in Romans 8, how when we don't know how to pray for as we ought to pray, He'll help us, give us utterance with groanings which cannot be uttered in our regular kind of speech. Okay? We can build up ourselves on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. If, there, if, if we're in a place where we're not at rest, and we're dealing with a bunch of stuff, this is the rest Isaiah 28 talks about, where the weary shall rest with stammering lips and another tongue. You can get over into rest. You can pray. You can be under the gun. I mean, and it can be demonic. But I tell you what, you'll yield to the Spirit of God. He's greater than anything that's in this world. Greater is He that's in you than he that's in this world. And when you begin to yield to Him and allow Him to, to give you utterance and you speak and yield to it. Oh, glory to God. Rest comes. The oppression leaves. The fear leaves. That's how it leaves, folks. That's how it leaves. Glory to God. But let me say this. You remember what James said? Oh, in his epistle? He said, James says, uh, Whosoever gets the tongue gets the steering wheel. You know, we don't... We don't I mean, he, he referred to bits in horse's mouth and rudders and ship. But for us, we more identify with a vehicle. I mean, you want to arrive somewhere, you want to go somewhere, you want to arrive at the destination you want to go to, whoever's got the tongue has got the steering wheel. Did I say it right? Did you say st steer. I'm country. And country's cool. No, I'm just... <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, think about what James said. We're not going to get into all that, but, but that's basically what he said. The bit can take the horse. The rudder can take the ship. He went on to say this. He said, no man can tame the tongue. We're not... Listen, no man can tame your tongue. There's a couple of elements here. Nobody can tame your tongue. I can't tame your tongue for you. You can't tame uh, my tongue for me. So no man can tame our tongue. We can tame it by the help of the Holy Ghost, and we can yield to the Holy Ghost because he's greater. He, he's not a man. He's the Spirit of God. And when you yield yourself to the Spirit of God and let him give you utterance in words, and this can be in your understanding or this can be in, in tongues, both. And we'll look at it and I'm, in just a second, and I'll show you. But whoever's got the tongue has got the steering wheel. 
oh, by the way, uh, if you yield your tongue to that influence, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost, you yield your whole being. In other words, if you take the principles of what James was talking about, he, he said it's able to bridle the whole body. If you yield your tongue and your mouth to the Spirit of God within you, it can have great influence on your whole being and your whole life. So I, I, like, to, I like to yield to the Him and give Him the... What would you say, Dana? Steering... Steering. Steering wheel. I, I want him, you know, to navigate and help me. You know, when I was a child, even as, as far back as I can remember, we'd drive from Florida. Of course, I was born in Florida, Winter Haven, and of course we'd commute back up here because that's where Dad was from. And back then it was two-lane roads. We didn't have interstate, or we didn't drive interstate, we drove the two-lane roads. And uh, so Dad would let me sit in his lap to drive. I, I would, you know, I couldn't reach the pedals. He had the pedals. But I mean, even that little, I mean, my feet were just hanging off the, the bench, you know. He'd let, me, he'd let me have the steering wheel. But you know what I, I noticed? Even though my hands were on the stroke, he, he had his hand there too. Come on, Good work. Yeah, you'll speak and you'll say things, but the Holy Ghost is there to take hold and to help you. I like that. And he'll stir your life. He'll make sure that your life is, is going exactly where he planned it to go, what he has for you. And let me say this to you. It'll be difficult apart from him. Because there's, there's other influences out there. There's other things that is, oh, it desires your attention. It, it wants you to yield to it. Remember, James even said that envying and, and strife, he called it wisdom. He said, the wisdom that is beneath. He called the envy and strife wisdom. He said, the wisdom that's beneath. And then he talked about a wisdom from above. There's two kinds of wisdoms, folk. There's a wisdom of this world that comes to naught. But there's a wisdom that comes from above. It comes from the Spirit of God comes from the greater one in us. I'm telling you, glory to God. I'm getting chicken skin now. I'm telling you, it's really, it's setting in on me because it's a reality. You know, we sing these songs, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart become clean and my shame was undone. And he began to take hold in my life and help me. Hallelujah. He's never left me. Never will leave me. Never will condemn me. Always there for me, to help me. He's called the helper, the one called along aside to help. Oh, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> I thought about this. I, I've been around people, even some people in my own family. They would yield their mouth, and they would curse all the time. We say down here in the South, they cuss. <laughs> now, listen... I know people sometimes slip, they get, uh, you know, hit their finger with a hammer, slip and fall, drop, drop a plate, drop the food. Oh, and they'll say something. I mean, people do that. I mean, we've all, listen, people have done that. I, that's not what I'm talking about. Listen, I had, I had family members and people, listen, I'm talking, I'm talking about, I work with people. You know, I used to know a man. You know, I saw about with it. Listen, you work with people and they they are yielding to an influence. They're yielding themselves in their mouth to an influence. And I mean it's it's almost like every other word. You see these in some of the songs and stuff. 
There's a spirit behind that. Let, let, let me say something to you. That influence is there with purpose. It wants to carry you down a road. Matter of fact, then it's going to turn off and, there, and there's going to be a cul-de-sac down at the end. You know, cul-de-sac where you can't go any further. And at the end of that cul-de-sac is destruction and shame and curse. I'm talking about the curse. And even people who make a lot of money with these things coming out of their heart, what they're yielding to, they may have the money. You remember what we talked about earlier? They may have some wealth and riches, but you follow their life. See what happens in their families and with their children and things. See how it turns out. Just follow them. They, it, may look, it may look one way on, on the surface, but, but you follow that person, that person that's yielding to that influence and yielding their heart and their mouth to that. See, see what other areas of their life it affects. Not just saying a curse word. I've seen it, folks. And like I said, I'm not talking about somebody who just slips up and says a bad word. Or I'm talking about people who yield to that spirit and to those words. There's a spirit. There's a reason why they're saying all those words. It's, it's spiritual. It's not just cussing. How much more, guys, can we yield to the spirit of God on the inside of us? Amen. Amen. Will you give me just a couple of minutes to close this out? Let me, let me tell you two of the most important things in life. And you can write this down. Two of the most important things in this life is what you yield to. And number one is what you yield to. And number two is what you resist. I'm going to say that again. Two of the most important things in this life Number one is what you yield to. And number two is what you resist. Mm, mm, mm. And aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? Aren't you thankful? Listen, we've all had moments where we yielded. Even Peter yielded. To the wrong spirit. Even after Jesus asked him the question. Who do men say that I the son of man am? And he said you're the Christ. And he said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you Peter. My father revealed this to you. And then just a few verses down we see. Where Jesus began to reveal to them. That he's got to go and suffer and die. And Peter said oh no. Oh no. No no no. And Jesus turned to him and said get behind me Satan. You don't know what spirit you are. You're savoring the things of men and not the things of God. Peter was not Satan, but he was yielding to something in that moment. A few minutes ago, he was yielding to something else. Now he's yielding to this. We've all yielded to things in our life that we're not proud of. There's moments we've had when we've done something or said something, like I said a while ago, whether we cursed or we said something to somebody we love. We've all had that moment, guys. Thank God for His mercy and His grace. We can come boldly. To the throne of grace and mercy. We have a high priest who understands that. That's not what I'm talking about as far as the influence in your life. And how you can begin to yield to things. And, and take on its characteristics. And that thing begins to dominate. It lords over you. That's why Paul told the church at Rome. He said, listen. Yeah. Sin has abounded. Grace has much more abounded. And he don't apologize for what he was preaching about grace and righteousness. He said, well, can we just continue then? Can we just go ahead and sin and live a life of sin and do what we want to do because we're under grace? He said, God forbid. He later on said this. He said, don't you understand that what you yield yourself to, you'll become a servant to that thing. You'll take on its characteristics. It will lord over you. Even if there's pleasure in it for a moment, even though it seems hunky-dory, everything doesn't seem like it's going bad. Oh, this is awesome. Remember I told you? I've never seen anybody catch a fish without, without bait. Without some kind of artificial lure. Just, just, throw, just throw a string line, fishing line in the water and see, you know, and see if you get anything. 
You're going to have to have a hook, and you're going to have to put some bait on it, or you're going to have to have an artificial lure. But it's a lure. And a lot of times people say, yeah, they got hooked. The hook got them. No, the hook didn't get them. The guy in the boat got them. The guy in the boat gets the fish, not the hook. The hook and the bait's part of the deal, but there's, there's somebody at the end of this thing that wants you. Let's close out with this. I, I need to close this out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians right quick. Lord, help me get this out right quick. Last setting of Scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's look at the 31st verse. He says, for ye may all, how many? Some of you. Just a five-fold ministry. He says, for ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. Back up to the very first verse. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he says, Follow after charity or love and desire spiritual gifts. Gifts is italicized. We've talked about this. Desire things pertaining to the Holy Spirit. But rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in, in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. And we talked about this earlier. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies or builds himself, but he that prophesieth edifies the church. Now, notice Paul said here that all of us are to prophesy one by one. Prophecy, speaking in tongues is utterance that the Spirit of God gives you. It's called he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. It's really not unknown. It's just unknown to the speaker. You remember at the day of Pentecost, they were speaking in tongues, and there was people from every nation there. They could hear them speaking in their native tongue. But let's, listen, Peter and them did not know what they were speaking. It was unknown to Peter and them, the 120 in the upper room. You can speak with the tongues of men. You can speak with the tongues, tongues of angels. Even when you speak in tongues, and it may not be a language that somebody understands, you're still speaking to God. God understands it. So when you get the word unknown, it's just unknown to the speaker. It doesn't mean that it's not unknown. But the, the word unknown is italicized to help us understand. Prophecy is inspired utterance or words by the Holy Spirit given in a known tongue. It's the same flow. Now listen to me, guys. It's the same flow as speaking in tongues. It's just you're speaking with your, out of your understanding. Everybody should be able to prophesy. If I, if, I called, if I called Chris up here and said, Chris, I want you to come up here and prophesy to the people. Or if I called Danny and said, Danny, come up here and prophesy to everybody. I tell you right now, she, she put the brakes on me. Chris may not, but I'm just saying, you're like, what? Wait, break? Chris like, yeah, I'm putting the brakes on too. Let me help you, Let me help you with this. Now, for time's sake, you can write this scripture down because we're, we're, we're over our time, but we need to do this. Uh, Revelation 19 verse 10 says, The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is Revelation 19 and 10. You can read the verses before it. Oh, it's wonderful. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Let me, tell you, let me say it to you like this. If I was to call Chris and Danny up here and say, Chris, Danny, I want you all to prophesy to the people. They would like, eh. But if I called Chris or Danny up here and said, Chris, come up here and just share and testify with people what the Lord's done for you in your life. That's prophecy. Especially, listen to me, especially if it comes from your heart. There's an anointing there. You're just sharing things from your heart. And the Spirit of God is just giving you that. And you're just sharing and testifying of the Lord and His goodness and who He is and what He's done for you. See, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. True prophecy, what does it do? If it's coming from your heart and you're just yielding. And we, can, we should do this all the time. We should all prophesy. 
But see, sometimes when we see the word prophesy, we're, we're not talking about being a prophet. Prophesying doesn't mean you're a prophet. Now, prophets can prophesy, but, just, but, but, but you can, any believer can prophesy. Paul said we can all prophesy one by one. But see, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What does prophecy do? It edifies. It exhorts. Exhortation means it encourages. That means it encourages. You're either edifying or building somebody up. You're either encouraging them or you're bringing comfort to them. But the flow and the source is the same. Just like it is with speaking in tongues. That's why we're to prophesy and we're to speak in the Spirit. Paul said, I'll pray in my, with the Spirit. I'll pray with the understanding also. I'll sing in the Spirit. I'll sing with the understanding. You know, just like Chris. Chris travels, sings. They go and sing, guys. Listen, and, and you get in services. Now, listen, I, I, oh, I, I'm going to have to shut this down, but there's a lot we could even teach on it, but he, could, he can tell you, and it's, it's at different times and situations, when the Spirit of God really takes hold with you, and there's people out there in the Spirit of God, what's coming from, even in singing, it, it, it comforts people. It edifies people. It, it encourages them. Right. It can be in song. It can be in just speaking. It, when we're talking about testifying, sharing. But a lot of times when we think of prophecy, we back off because we think about being a prophet or some word or something like that. It can include that. But really, simple prophecy is utterance that is inspired by the Holy Spirit from your heart in a known language. And we should all be yielding to Him in that. Everybody. This will happen, and you don't have to be in a church service. As a matter of fact, it needs to be happening outside here in our lives with people in the workplace, in the marketplace, when you're just talking to somebody, when you run into somebody, all of a sudden they can just open up to you and from your heart, the Spirit of God in you, just, just, you'll begin sharing with them about the Lord and His goodness and even in your life and, and maybe give them an example because the same afflictions are accomplished in our brethren that in the world and the Spirit of prophecy will operate through you. It'll be testifying of Jesus. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We should all be prophesying. Paul said, I would that you all speak with tongues. I would that you all prophesy. Why? Because you're yielding. Who's got the stirring wheel? Where we're ending up. I know I didn't pronounce it right again. I can tell my wife's looking at me like, she's like, you still don't get it. I don't care. That's another down here in the sound. I don't care. That's, that's for those of you watching. Up. Oh, me. But our biscuits and gravy are better than yours. <laughs> if you're down here in the south. <laughs> Guys, this, is, this has been such a, a privilege. It stirred my heart going into this series just because I, I really have such a witness from him and me, especially where we are. You know, once again, I'll close with this. Let us become more aware of the one who lives on the inside of us. He's our helper. He, he's here for our benefit, but he's also here for the benefit of others. He will live through us. We will be something. There, there'll be a presence and an air about us. And it's not about thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. It's about a relationship that we have with him. And through that, people can recognize it. And then we'll trust him to manifest himself. It's like Brother Hagin said. He said, I'm just going to yield to the Spirit more and more and speak and worship and pray. And the more I'll do, listen, he'll manifest. It's, he, he wants to. And it's not something we have to work up or try to make happen. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You've encouraged us. Especially knowing that the days are evil. 
We're to redeem the time. We're, the under, we're to understand what your will is for us. We're to be filled with your spirit. We're to yield to the Holy Ghost. And we're to speak and to give thanks. Matter of fact, it goes on uh, to say that through that means and through being filled, it'll be a lot easier for us to love our wives, submit to our husbands, love our children, to be good employer, employers and employees. Because if we try to do this in, in our flesh, because right after these scriptures, it talks about all these things. And if we try to do these things in the flesh and not being uh, yielded to the Holy Ghost and being filled with the Spirit, it will be hard. It will be very difficult. But the more we can yield and fellowship and pray in the Spirit and yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost, oh, what a blessing. The other things will become easier. It's not that we'll never be challenged at times, but it'll just become much easier. There'll be a greater flow to it. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're here or you're watching online, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. You, you, you first must be born of the Spirit. Your spirit must become new. You know, you can be born of Him. You can receive His life and His nature. His Spirit on the inside of you by simply asking Him to come into your heart. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're watching, just pray this with me. Say, Lord, Lord Jesus, I call upon your name. I ask you to come into my heart. Fill me with your Spirit. Make all things new in my life. I believe on you and I believe you died for me. And that you were raised from the dead for me. And I ask you now to take control of my life. Fill me to overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple if you say it from your heart. Not from your head, but from your heart. Listen, I, you can tell when it's from your heart. I knew where my heart was years ago. I wasn't saying things out of my head. My heart, I desired in my heart. For my life to be different. And I knew it was only through him and by him that it could be different. It came to me. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Next week, the Feth Kenners will be with us. Amen. John and Eileen's going to be here with us. Oh, hallelujah. They, listen, guys, when, when they weren't able to come down because of the COVID thing, because they usually come here in early spring, March. Oh, they were, uh, you know. They were so look, looking forward to coming, but they're coming. And, uh, and we're going to have a good time with them. They love us dearly. We love them. They're part of us. We're part of them. Amen. And uh, they'll be here. And uh, glory to God. And then uh, after they um, are gone, uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going we're gonna to start a new series. And we're going we're gonna to start a series on healing. Amen. Healing. Healing. How to receive healing. How to minister healing. Healing. It's part of doing the works of Jesus. We're commissioned to do the works of Jesus. Amen? I'm clear. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I'm clear in my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Ronald... Thank you for coming, brother. I, I mean, hallelujah. It's always good to see you, man. I, I'm, mm. Praise the Lord. You know, just showing up, being a witness to me. He don't have to say nothing. I mean, he could say something to me, and he will. We've already talked. But even just, I'm telling you, it's spiritual, guys. It's hard to explain sometimes, but I'm just telling you things. In the same way with all of you, but I'm just, you know, I'm using it as an example. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We're good. Love y'all. Hey, we'll see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Everybody's dismissed.